When I am dead, wrap the mantle of the red, the black and the green around me. For in the new life I shall rise up first with God's grace and blessing. To lead the millions of the heights in the triumph that you will know. Look for me in a world when I are a storm. Look for me all around you. For with God's grace, I shall come back with countless millions of black men and women who have died in America, those who have died in the West Indies, and those who have died in Africa to aid you in the fight for liberty, freedom, and life. Any leadership that teaches you to depend upon another race is a leadership that will enslave you. Any leadership that teaches you to depend upon another race is a leadership that will enslave you. They gave leadership to our foreparents and that leadership made them slaves. But we have decided to find a leadership of our own to make ourselves free men. Our great scholars having passed through the colleges and universities have thrown away the blessed record. Babylon did it. Assyria did it, France under Napoleon did it, Germany under Prince von Bismarck did it, England under America under George Washington did it, Africa with 400 million black people can do it. If you cannot do it, if you are not prepared to do it, then you will die. You rest a coward. You rest of imbeciles, you rest of good for nothing. If you cannot do what other men have done, what other nations have done, what other races have done, then you have better die. Can we do it? We can do it. We shall do it. We have prayed to God for vision and for leadership. Uniting, whether you're Muslim, whether you're Buddhist, whatever you do, it's one God, one aim, one destiny. So we are serious about that. That's why we know African women rule the world. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn this over to my big brother, my elder. And I, I, I had the opportunity of working with his brother, so I mean, I got the love coming from both of the sons. But if it were not for Amy Jocks Garvey, I don't know whether the Garveyans would be so clear what you're about to hear would ever be happening. Because Mark has committed himself to uplift us. Amy committed herself also to uplift us, but also committed us to make sure that the legacy was here. Not just the sons, but the books. But anyway, without any further ado, Dr. Garvey, Dr. Julius Garvey. And I'm not going to give you a resume. I'm just going to pass it on to him because he's done a whole lot of things. And, 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 and get the book and you will see and you can read and find out some of the things that Dr. Garvey has been about doing all of his life. Yes, sir. Thanks, thanks, everybody. Uh, thanks, everybody, for, for coming out. And... Um, it's indeed a pleasure to be in this uh, uh, space um, where there's so much of the word. And I would like to thank the sister for the libation uh, that brought the spirit here. And I think that's, that's very important, um, always to, to start with the spirit. And um, I'd just like us to breathe slowly and deeply for a while as we get in touch with our spirits and our spirits, your spirits and the spirits of the ancestors and even those that are unborn because from the African perspective it's all one universe. Spirit is everywhere Spirit transcends matter, but it also infiltrates matter. Mm -hmm. And of course, it took Europeans a long time to understand that. Einstein came up with energy equals mc squared, and they figured out that matter was just slow-moving energy. So they absorbed that over time. But then they use that information to develop atomic weapons, nuclear weapons. 
because then they split the atom to get to the energy. And of course they dropped the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Now we knew that, you know, tens of thousands of years before, but we didn't use that information to develop weapons to kill other people. We also knew that consciousness was primary and that you didn't have spirit without consciousness. You know, in terms, in terms of spirits, also the second law of thermodynamics, which they figured out, is, is that, you know, um, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed. Again, you know, we knew that, you know, thousands and thousands of years ago. But of course, when they came from Greece and elsewhere and saw what we understood, but they didn't understand it from the inside, they saw it from the outside in, and they called us animists, in a derogatory sense. Of course we are animists, because we understand that energy animates everything. Hmm? And we know that consciousness goes along with the energy. But they didn't understand that. They felt that consciousness was a secondary manifestation of matter. As a matter of fact, in studying the brain, they said that consciousness is an epiphenomenon of the neuronal activity on the brain. But, but then, you know, uh, the physicists advance um, to the point now where they understand um, not only that energy is primary, but also that consciousness is primary, and wherever energy goes, consciousness goes. And they discovered that, you know, basically at the beginning of the 20th century. Um, but they have not been able to absorb that into their philosophy, because their philosophy is still a, a philosophy of scientific materialism, that matter is what is important. So it's important to us as a people, in terms of our understanding of spirit, because that, that is primary, and spirit, consciousness, and wisdom. And of course, if we look back at Nile Valley civilizations, we call that our moon as the consciousness that's everywhere. Ra, that is the spirit or the energy that is also everywhere. And Pata, that's the intelligence and information that travels with energy and consciousness. And that is what the universe is made from, and that is what created the universe, and that's what created us. So when the sister was pouring libation, she was linking us, our consciousness, with the consciousness of the ancestors, because sometimes our consciousness becomes fixated on material things in the environment and we lose that understanding and that relationship with the essential consciousness which is who we are, the consciousness, energy and information self that is part of the universe. Of course, nowadays they call it, you know, with, with the quantum physics, etc. Nowadays they, they call it the unified field. Mm -hmm. and they found that consciousness is primary in the unified field. So all of these things that they've been finding out based on materialistic science have led them to the understanding that spirit and consciousness is primary. But they've not been able to absorb that into their philosophy. <laughs> and that is what they've used to trap us in terms of their understanding, which as I mentioned, led them to the development of nuclear weapons. Their misunderstanding of consciousness, feeling that consciousness only relates to the events, physical events out there in the environment, in terms of materialism. And that information comes to you through the five senses, and then you have an intelligence of the brain that deals with that. So that is their philosophy, and that is their understanding 
of humanity, via our understanding of life and our relationship with the universe. So that ends up with this individualism, with self versus other, and with the belief that you're separate from the universe and you can conquer nature and extract from nature all the resources that you need and take as much of it for yourself. Again, that's the Eurocentric paradigm. Our paradigm is, is, is different. Our paradigm is a spiritual paradigm in terms of understanding Amun, Ra, and Tata, consciousness, energy, and information. And that's what created us, and that's, what, that's who we are. And consciousness has no boundary. You know that. There's no end to consciousness. It doesn't begin here. It doesn't end here. Energy, as I just mentioned, has no boundary. So we, in terms of the manifestation of consciousness and energy, also have no boundary. We have a physical form in which our consciousness and energy resides. That is our temple, if you will, as such. But our consciousness energy has no boundary, and that's what unites us. And that's why the sister was bringing the ancestors to join us. And that is what could not be broken in the transatlantic voyage and our enslavement. They could beat us physically, they could even enslave the mind, but they could not destroy spirit. And because they could not destroy spirit, spirit will triumph because it's indestructible. So the materialism that we see, we see now how it is in conflict with itself. We see all the problems of, of the world. Hmm? The teenage pregnancies, the teenage suicides, the anxiety, the, the fear. Uh, you know, as a physician, you know, all the people that came into my office, and they're over 50 years, they were on at least five or six different medications, walking with the tripod and this and that and so on. Because of, 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 of the stress and, and because of the society in which they live. And, you know, only about 5% of the diseases that we have can be traced to genetic origin. The rest of it is lifestyle, the rest of it is environment, the rest of it is the food we eat. So we live in a toxic society that does not understand nature hmm? and is actually poisoning us. And it's the same thing with the economic uh, system. There's an abundance there for all of us but we have an economic, uh, financial, and even and social system, actually, that extracts as much as they can in terms of resources, makes commodities, and markets it, but then the wealth is subsumed up to that top 5%, and everybody else is taken advantage of. So obviously that's a system that's not sustainable. I'm saying all this to say that Babylon is really in trouble. I think a lot of us know that. Okay, you see, now the wars upon wars upon wars. World War One, World War Two, Korean War, Vietnam War, Afghanistan, Syria, um, and in and, and North Africa, um, um, Libya with Gaddafi, and so on, and you can Iraq, and so on. You can go on and on. Uh, wars and wars. Now it's Ukraine, they're pushing and drawing fire from Russia. Where is it going to end? It's going to end in nuclear weapons. You know, you don't create peace by going to war. So, but uh, this is the confrontational system of individualism and competition that is intrinsic part of materialism. So the system has so many flaws and it has existed for 400, 500 years, but you can see what it has done to the rest of the world. What did it do to the Native American? Destroy them, genocide. The Australian, genocide, and stealing their continents and so on. What did it do to the African enslavement? You know, more than 60 million displaced one way or another. And, and then the colonialism, stealing the resources and so on and so forth. And, and we have the hegemony 
of Europe and America over the rest of the world. But we're in a transition point now, and um, definitely um, we have to be aware of that because what's coming out of this is a multipolar world, and we have to decide where we are with that. And uh, I just want to say that the paradigm that has to come out of this is a different paradigm from the Eurocentric paradigm. Because that, as I just demonstrated in some way, I don't want to go through all the details, but you know the details as well as I do, has failed. It is not sustainable. It's not something that allows human beings to prosper in terms of um, beneficent relationship with each other. And, and to have what they need in terms of, to have, um, not just surviving, but, but prospering as human beings, as full human beings. And that derives from the fact that there's an ignorance of the fullness of the humanity um, as far as the European is concerned. It goes no further than the physical body with the senses and the brain with the intellect. That's as far as it goes in terms of what they consider to be human. So you end up in terms of what you have is really a human animal, but you don't really have a full human being. We've always been the full human being. We are the first full human beings. We are the first ones that have the consciousness of our humanity fully 200,000 years ago. And, and that has been demonstrated, not just demonstrated, but, but, but it has been um, written about and it has been carried down in, in terms of oral knowledge over time that, you know, we are spirit, mind, and body. We're not just mind and body, we're spirit, mind, and body. And our spirit tells our mind what to do because it's, that's the creative element itself. And the mind carries it out and tells our body what to do. So we have always have to access spirit in terms of who we are. That's our essence. And again, I refer to the sister who brought the ancestral spirits here. We can listen to the ancestral spirits because the ancestral spirits are telling us what to do. We are our ancestors. We stand on their shoulders, so we know we have unfinished work to do. And we are linked with our progeny, so we know that we have to pass on that job to them. And, and that job is going to be a reinstitution, if you will, of African humanism. Because that has to, human beings have to be the center in terms of your society, in terms of your politics, in terms of your economics, in terms of your philosophy and your educational system. At this point in time, humans are marginalized. It's all about um, turning us, shall we say, into machines. As you know, most of us, if we go to school and you have to learn certain things in the book from page 10 to 20, and you regurgitate it to the teacher or on a test, and if you remember 90% of it, then you're an A student, and you'll be able to get the job within the system and carry on the system as it has been originated, you know, ever since the days of the feudal system. That's not education. That's brainwashing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so th that is why the system is the way it is, and it hasn't really progressed. You know, as we can see, you know, from what happened in, in, in Memphis uh, uh, recently, the system is still barbaric. And, and to the extent that it has poisoned us, um, we have taken in so much of the poison of the system that we are part of the system and we manifest the same poison. So we have to go back to spirit. The Sankofa, we have to go back to spirit. Because that's the only thing that's going to save us. Because that's the only thing that's strong enough to fight the materialism that we see today, as my father said. You know, spirituality and science is the only thing that's going to fight the gross materialism that we see today. So each of us has that responsibility to get to know our spirit. It's a process and it's not necessarily easy because we live in a society that distracts us with all kinds of things. We all live by our cell phones and our TV and all the other 
apparatuses that keep us connected to events uh, out there. But we need to take time on a daily basis and, and create um, um, a way, uh, a process for us to access our spirit. Because if we access our spirit, then of course there won't be any problem in terms of our unity. Because again, spirit is one. Spirit has no boundary, as we've said. As consciousness has no boundary. So when you access your spirit, you're accessing my spirit, you're accessing your spirit and your spirit and yours. And we can work together without division, Brother Sengar is talking about. All of us working together. And it's the only way we're going to get to Moja, right? Yep. Which is unity. It's the only way we get to go to Moja if we get to the spirit. If we only go as deep as the ego, then that's what causes the divisions. Okay? Because our identity of ourselves is this mind-body identity. It's not a full consciousness, but we have to get to that full consciousness of who we are, which is a wide, expansive, vast consciousness that links all of us. And again, from the scientific point of view, we can call it the unified field, out of which everything comes, all events comes. It sustains us, it creates us, and we are part of that. So we can access that creativity. Any problems that we have, we can access that creativity. There's no such thing a problem that lasts forever. So we can transform our circumstances when we access that spirit. Because again, that spirit is part of universal spirit. And you know, it's not just spirit. I mentioned energy. What is energy? It's power. So when you access your spirit, you access a power that is tremendous. And you can manifest that. And when you do that, nothing can stop you. And not only can nothing stop you, but you know, you don't have to be afraid in terms of consequences, as my dad said. You, you, you know, uh, if you have no confidence in self, you're twice defeated in the race of life. But with confidence, you're, you're born even before you started. Now, how could he say that? Mm -hmm. uh, he has to be a spiritual person. Because you see, if you don't finish what you want to do in this lifetime, you'll have another lifetime to carry it forward, okay? Because we believe in reincarnation. We believe the spirits out there are waiting to be reborn, etc. We believe that our ancestors were born in us, we will be reborn in our children and our grandchildren. So there's no such thing as death, so we have, do not have to fear death. All we have to do is promote life, okay? And if we can promote life from the spiritual perspective, we'll be able to unite with each other, we'll be able to be kind and, and, and loving in terms of each other, and, and uh, we'll be able to deal with the circumstances, the negative circumstances under which we live, and we'll be able to create our own uh, type of environment, which again, I call African humanism. And I think that's the paradigm, that the, um, the new paradigm that's going to come out of Africa, and that's the new paradigm that the world needs. And of course, the world, the world needs us because we have to show them the way. Because it's impossible for the European to go, you know, 180 degrees about face and say, I've been wrong for 2,000 years and I've harmed the universe, I've destroyed the planet and global warming, etc. <laughs> climate change is my problem. We have done that and we're going to change. We are the ones that have to bring about the change. We have to show them what real life is all about in terms of African humanism. So it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for coming. Wow. Thank you for listening. Peace and blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Never forget your God. Remember that we live, work, and play for a binding racial hierarchy whose only natural, spiritual, and political limits shall be God and Africa at home and abroad. With one, with God's dearest blessings, I leave you for a while. One love. Brothers and sisters, Marcus, Mosiah, Harvey.